This is an interim uh, of the core working group. Chairs, it's me, Marco, and Jaime. It's an official uh, ITF meeting, so not well applies. IPR, not only uh, please be nice with each other. So we uh, we had two items in the agenda for today. Uh, the first one was uh, revisiting latest actions on the resource directory document. I uh, understood uh, we don't have actual updates since last time to, to check today. Uh, correct, Christian? Um, yeah, sorry. I didn't get around to the last two weeks to, to progress on this. So I do have a lot of action items, um, but unfortunately no progress for today. No worries, and we can take it at the next interim. Uh, just as well. But then we have uh, all more time for uh, the Dynlink document. And Alan also here today mentioned his pull request yesterday. Uh, so adding more material for the discussion. And I think Bill is actually going to drive uh, the presentation. Yeah, thanks. Uh, so I, I have to confess that we didn't actually um, progress very much as well. But but since there was an interim available and um, and Jaime asked me to to come and present something, and I said just okay, let's let's just do that. Uh, so thanks to thanks to Alan also for for giving this uh, for his pull requests lately. Uh, I'll share my screen and then uh, uh, let's see if this works again as I initially thought. Okay. Let's see. Is this working? I suppose it should be. Try to move full screen. Is that good? Yes, that's great. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, um, uh, not very uh, many updates since IETF 108, um, but I'll just give you a summary of the next steps. Um, so we are we are right now in draft eleven. Draft eleven has was was the last last one that was submitted just before just before the um, uh, one oh eight meeting. And uh, what we had was a roadmap uh, in which we gradually moved towards some of the editorial changes that uh, changed the language in which we uh, start talking about state transfers uh, when you actually have the uh, the conditional observe attributes. Uh, applied on resources, and then while while we're doing that, we'll also take the time to discuss and 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 put in the future drafts that uh, will address some of the issues that we discovered with uh, Pmax, uh, particularly when you have uh, the uh, the co-op server and the co-op client separated by a proxy uh, that might or might not behave the way you want it to. And then uh, proposals from uh, Alan and uh, and the Live at M2M people for uh, EP Main and EP Max. Uh, so I'll, I'll just have a couple of um, um, slides more, Alan, and then and then please go ahead and and, and discuss that. Um, so the 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 idea was to convene small research groups or small discussion groups uh, before IETF one hundred nine. We want. We generally have been using Jitsi and uh, taking notes over HackMD. Uh, so please let us know if you would like to receive an invitation to join. So I, I actually extended this invitation at the uh, core meeting in 108, but uh, then I didn't really um, get any uh, anybody else uh, who wanted to join in. So I guess we are still in the same same group, which is actually kind of nice because we 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 have rather rather effective discussions and also very um, uh, informed opinions, but um, but if you want to join in, uh, any of you who are here right now, please please let let me know or uh, just just mail the authors of Dime Link and uh, you'll be you'll be included with the mails. Okay, so um, the ongoing discussions in draft eleven basically just discusses, like I said, uh, notifications arising from setting uh, these observe attributes and just reporting them and and thinking of message transfers. So. So the the language is is not very restful and um, and and rather it, it sounds as if we are kind of proposing a, a completely new protocol. So um, there are substantial editorial changes that need to be performed uh, in order to alter this language and um, and the the idea is to align it towards uh, using language that that um, who was it? okay so that was. Uh, 
more more towards uh, how how it's done in, for example, the observe uh, RFC. Uh, that we talk about restful state trans state state transitions and and transfers. And then the this is probably the last slide that I had. So uh, this is uh, again literally it, this came from uh, this study is actually taken also from IDF 108, but there's a proposal basically from OMA to to support two new attributes, EP min and EP max. We had a small discussion in in uh, 108. It wasn't a very long discussion because we we didn't have that much time. But um, Alan has actually augmented that proposal today with an example use case. Uh, which I hadn't had time to go through. I'm sorry, but uh, we'll, we'll do it now. So uh, EPmin and EPmax basically uh, they differ from from PMin and PMax in in a very significant manner. Uh, and then uh, the the entire discussion is is basically found in um, this uh, GitHub uh, as an issue number eighteen. So that's that's basically tracking uh, the opinions of of everybody. And I don't know if I can actually um, do this, but let, let me try to see if I can. Oops, what did I do now? Oops. Uh, we are seeing your desktop, but um, if you want to share yeah, now, the issue, I guess, feel free to share the whole screen. No, actually what had happened was that my, my laptop went into, uh, it, the screen got locked. So just a minute. Uh, here you go. So this is a, this was what I wanted to show you. Can you still see my screen? And uh, yes, we see the browser. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so this is the this is the current uh, uh, issue here, and uh, we have had some discussions. As you can see, it already started. Alan Alan proposed this on the thirteenth of April, but I think the discussion was even uh, earlier than that because the original uh, information came on the core mailing list. And then uh, we proposed that Ellen basically raise an issue in the GitHub. So, so this was even earlier than that. And, and then there have been already some opinions on that from others. So um, um, the latest, the latest uh, status update here is, is this. This is a text to consider. And um, Ellen had just given this like 18, 18 hours ago. Ellen, I think, I think it's time that, that um, basically I, I, I could stop sharing my screen or what do you think? We we could e use your screen, or you could make me presenter. I, either way, we'll yeah. I, well, I, let me stop sharing my screen. So, in case you need to present other things, then then you can use your screen as well. Okay. That's Just a second. Good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's yours now. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Are you guys able to see my screen? Yes. Yes. Excellent. Okay. So, uh, as Bill said, I, I put the issue in, and uh, after we got through this, and we we did have some very good discussions because it needs to be clear to the reader of the document what new these new attributes are and how to use them. So, the first thing I did is I actually created a pull request to uh, put the the actual changes to the the draft in that I thought were applicable. And then I just wrote this example text because I wasn't sure how we wanted to get this example text in the specification. Because when we were discussing this at, I think at 108, um, there were example formats in it because of other uh, confusions on the use of Pmax. Uh, so I wasn't sure how we wanted to create the content. So I just put it here in the, um, in the uh, issue rather than adding it in the, um, uh, uh, pull request. So let me walk you through some of the logic here, and and I want to first show you. Uh, and it, by the way, anybody interrupt me at any time, or if you think I'm going the wrong direction and you want to pull me a certain direction, please please go ahead and just you know uh, just jump right in. So in the lightweight MM spec, and this is the latest, well, almost the released version of the spec that's coming out quite soon. We have, you know, your conditional notification attributes in the DIN link are translated to notification class attributes in the lightweight MM spec. And so what you'll see is we've got PMIN, PMAX, greater than, less than, step. Um, we also created some that we felt were important for lightweight MM. And so we created these EPMIN, EPMAX, EDGE, CON, and HQMAX. 
So I just wanted to go over these five new attributes very quickly and then talk about how uh, I've proposed to modify DidLink so far. And I don't know, some, I've heard some people call it DidLink and other people pr pronounce it DynLink. I like DynLink, but I'll pronounce it any, any way you guys want. Okay, so the EP min is supposed to uh, control when the device does a measurement. So it doesn't impact the notification itself, but the device is its control of the device in generating the notification, and EP max as well. Um, the edge is a new attribute that actually controls the, the evaluation of the attribute to determine whether it changed. Did it change on the leading edge or the falling edge? Uh, the, the rising edge or the falling edge, the leading edge, the, however you want to call that in terms of the, the traditional electronic representations. We also added a new uh, control parameter called confirmable notification, and that is because even though we have a default that when you're generating a notification that you'll send it confirmable or non-confirmable based upon the default, there could be, your default could be non-confirmable because your assumption is most notifications are just informative. But if there's an important notification, you'd want to designate on this observation this notification must be sent confirmable because it's critical. So, you know, a, a, an alarm of some sort versus just a, a, an informative notification. Um, and then we also have a, a, a historical queue depth. So if you are maintaining historical notifications because you are currently unable to reach the, the client with the notifications, then the server will is at least being directed to say, save five of these things. So when we come back up, at least I have a, a history of five. Those are things we felt were important in uh, the, the lightweight and the end specification. So when I relate that back to the Denlink, Denlink specification, the only ones I started to put in were about EP men and EP max. But I think these other concepts are also important that we need to consider for Denlink because I think other users of the, the co-op specification may want to take advantage of these concepts. All right, so that was my first like level set of the evolution of how this happened. So are there any questions so far? And by the way, I, I do have the chat window up, so if anybody wants to type something in the chat window, I can look at that as well. All right, so I'll, I'll continue then. So uh, there, can, uh, oh. can can you quickly <clears throat> cover how you get at this historical queue? How, how I'm sorry, Karsten, go ahead. I say again. How do you get at this historical queue? You, you ah. didn't scroll enough uh, up enough uh, for me to read the text. Okay. So. Uh, I don't know if you can see everything, but here, uh, here are the notes on this. Okay, you essentially send a piece of CentiMail that has all these values. Correct. Correct. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And, and that's interesting, because we just added this capability a few months ago. Uh, not a, you know, this, this H, HQ Max has not yet been, um, I would say it hasn't been implemented in many uh, distributions, nor has it been widely utilized in the field. So I, I do suspect we'll, we'll, you know, hopefully we, we understood what the market needed and that this will, um, I don't know, evolve is the right word, but there, you may see some changes based upon um, deployments. All right, um, let's go back to, Okay, so to the the um, issue, the, the issue was just about EP min and EP max, and that was, as we said, based upon email threads, it was better to capture that in an issue so we could, you know, use GitHub to its availability or, you know, greater capabilities. Uh, eventually, we said, okay, after all of our email and meeting discussions, just put in a, a pull request. And I did that. So let, let me just go trying to think maybe the next step let me let me do the example here 
because I think that I'm making it bigger just in case you guys need it. Um, the, this explains the logic of these two new parameters. And then I'll show you how I try to accommodate them in the Dynelink draft because it, they're not notification parameters. They're really control parameters about generating the notification or about doing the measurements in order to generate the notification. So I had to separate out conditional notification attributes from conditional control attributes, which is what I'm calling these things that are really controlling um, uh, how the notifications are generated or the measurement, when the, when the measurements occur. Okay, so as my example, I'm gonna say these are conditional control attributes and we're gonna do an observation where you can use PMIN, PMAX, and greater than, and then these new two, two new ones, the um, uh, minimum evaluation and the maximum evaluation, okay, uh, periods. So in this use case, I have a temperature sensor and I'm gonna send a notification whenever it goes above or below 100 degrees. So I set GT greater than 100. You know, I, I, I don't want it to report more than every five seconds. So I'm gonna set my PM into five seconds. And I want it to report at least every six, 60 seconds. So I'm gonna set Pmax equal to 60. So that is just standard example using GT, uh, Pmin and Pmax. I, I don't think there's any ambiguity there. Or, um, so now in, re in reality, what this could mean is I have my device and I generate a report on the temperature sensor because it went above 100. Now, I can go to sleep as my device for five seconds because I know I can't report until P min expires after five seconds. And I could just, honestly, I could, as my device, I could go to sleep for 60 seconds because that's Pmax. Wake up at Pmax and send my report. So if I wanted to, based upon these parameters, I could just go to sleep, wake up once every 60 seconds and send my temperature. But I don't think that's the behavior that is, is, is wanted by the client based upon these parameters. But there's nothing that guides the device uh, in, in what it should do besides just you know waking up at Pmax and sending the, the report. So in order to control how frequently the, the server measures the temperature sensor, the client can configure two more parameters and they're called EP min and EP max. So this is the uh, minimum uh, uh, evaluation period and the maximum evaluation period. And so in order to control how frequently the server measures the temperature sensor, the client's going to configure it such that it doesn't do it more frequently than five seconds. I don't want to waste battery life every, you know, waking up every second. I want to wait a five period of a minimum period of five seconds. And so that's EP min but I must measure it at least every 10 seconds. And that's gonna be EP max. Alan, why yeah. did it send, why did it set P max to 60? If it really wants to hear from the server every, uh, from the t sensor every 10 seconds. Because just because you measure it every 10 seconds doesn't mean you report it. You still have to abide by the reporting criteria. So if my temperature, I'm measuring every 10 seconds in worst case, right? If that temperature hasn't changed, I'm not gonna report it. But after 60 seconds, if it hasn't changed, I wanna report it anyway. And that was- Ah, okay. So, so 60 seconds is actually the refresh time and not the, the, the um, edge condition time that you must do. Sounds like Pmax is actually misnamed, is what I it sounds to me. I I'm I'm using Pmax as it's currently defined. So right the yeah. the way that you know just the the way the Dynelink draft is written right now is I can't report earlier than Pmin, and I must report regardless of whether a change has occurred at Pmax, and so I'm still using it in that context. So you know. I have a temperature sensor and I reported because it went to 101 degrees. It drops down to 100, well, 
it goes up to 102 degrees. I'm not reporting anything because it hasn't, you know, my greater than hasn't been violated. It's still above 100, even though it's changed. So after my P max is 60 seconds, I'm gonna report 102 degrees. So even though my, my evaluation criteria has not changed, I'm still gonna report, and that's what PMAX is for. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm hoping that we just communicated well and I answered your question. I, I think so. I, I'm, just, I'm just saying is that it seems like you're introducing a similar sounding uh, attribute, um, similar, like the name is similar, but actually the, the original attribute was perhaps poorly named and uh, for the purpose of what you were doing. And that's why the, 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 that's why the, uh, the, the need, the need for this other thing is not so obvious because um, it's not a maximum. It's a P max is not a maximum. It's a, uh, you must report every this time anyway. And, and, uh, um, yeah, so I can see why it was named that way. It just seems like maybe some renaming here would be helpful, but anyway. Yeah, and I'm I'm all open for any changes because the concepts I think help deployments. Because um, right now I actually do know of a device that said I just wake up on every Pmax and, and send the value because that's my minimum energy usage. And I- And, it, and if the tree didn't fall in the forest, why? Should you pay attention, right? Well, I mean, that's essentially what you're saying is that yeah. that I only pay attention to noise in the forest every P max. That's what you said. Told me to. Why would I do anything else? Correct, and that that kills me because honestly, I don't want to wait sixty seconds to get my fire alarm. Just because you allow me to do that doesn't make it right. So that's why I'm introducing these new parameters. That if you don't want to want to allow me to to go to sleep every P max. This is your ability to tell me not to do that. All right, so let's go through the timeline because I actually like the way I wrote the timeline. Uh, and I'm I, because I'm, I'm hoping this makes sense to people. So I'm going to start. I just generated a notification, right? My temperature went above 100 degrees. I just generated a notification. So I'm considering that T0. Now, of course, because of PMIN, I have to wait five seconds before I do anything else because I can't generate a report. So I'm gonna go to sleep for five seconds and I'm gonna wake up at the end of PMIN. So after you know, PMIN expires, which is T equals five now, I'm gonna do a measurement. And pretty much I think that's the way everybody would do it because at the end of PMIN, you know, if you went below 100 or let's say you were below 100 and went above 100, you'd wanna generate a notification as soon as you can. So at P min X pre T equal five, I'm gonna do a measurement. If the if the temperature, you know, met the GT criteria, so if it was a hundred above a hundred, went below, or if it went below and went above, of course I'd generate a notification. But let's say that we haven't made any change from our previous state, of course I'm not gonna generate a notification. So I at P min X pre, I wake up, do the measurement, nothing happened, go back to sleep. So from my new parameter, which is EP min, I know I can't do another evaluation for five more seconds. So I must wait another five seconds before doing another measurement. And now I'm at T equal 10. So at T equal 10, I say, uh, you know what? <laughs> I'm still in power saving mode. I don't want to do a measurement. So I'm gonna go to sleep until EP max expires to where I have to do a measurement. So EP min says, you can do a measurement at the end of this. EP max says, I must do a measurement at the end of this. So um, now it's T equal 15, right? So 15 seconds went by. I'm now at T equal 15 because of EP max, I must do a measurement now. Okay, well, the temperature uh, has changed. That's my use case. So I'm gonna generate a notification. If the, if the, temperature hasn't changed if the gt hasn't uh, met the criteria i'm going to go back to sleep at least for another five seconds right or i could just go back to sleep for another 10 seconds because of ep max but it, the device it's up to the device to decide its cadence in terms of the wake up based upon ep min and ep max 
let's say 60 seconds goes by and I was waking up every 10 seconds, but the temperature never changed, doesn't matter. At T equals 60, I have to generate a notification. So that's my example in the way these, these new attributes are meant to be used. And I, I think it's important that the logic is understood before we shift over to the, to the pull request. Does that make sense? I, I don't hear any questions. So either my audio is bad or I'm, I'm an amazing specialist. Do you, uh, do you, Alan, have any kind of guidance for what happens if uh, EPMIN and EPMAX are not actually uh, set from the client to the server? Then it's the same situation we had right now, which is yeah. it's the device. So, so in other words, if there's no EP mean EP max, the, the, um, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it the, the, the default implementation, but the, I say that the logical course of action is, is to use P min as the, as the sleep interval. So that's the way you're saying, right? Um, not necessarily, because there's nothing that says that it doesn't say that the, <laughs> So when it, when the way it's written right now, forget my new proposal, the way it's written right now is, you know, I can, I must, I must not report for five seconds and I must report at P max, but it doesn't tell me about anything in between. So what should the device's sleep interval be? It, it doesn't say there's no guidance. So if we wanted to, we could say that the. Um, if EP min and EP max are not defined, that P min may be used to guide the device on the, you know, the, the reporting evaluation uh, period. We could say that. I have no problem with that. But it, I don't think we can enforce that because then we'd break all the implementations that currently use P min. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I mean, we, in, the, in the current draft, I mean, there, there is some, there's, I mean, there's some code already there that so describes what to do. Yeah. Let's, uh, go, let's go to the, the pull requests. Because um, then um, what I can do is I can edit this um, online uh, on the pull request. If there are, you know, Bill, if, if you want me to like capture some changes in the pull request, we can do that. So let me go ahead and go to the pull request and show you, uh, you know, what I'm proposing as the changes. Okay. And get this chat. All right, um, I can't get the chat window over or else I wasn't able to see. So let me go to the, the rich text. The, the, the first concept I said, as I pointed out, I said they're not notification attributes, now they're control attributes. And I did want to distinguish between the two because when we were having our, our email discussions and our verbal discussion at 108, it was, but these, these EP min and EP max have nothing to do about generating the notification. And that's correct. That statement was 100% correct. They're about control of the device when evaluating whether the notification should occur. So I call them control attributes. And uh, I tried to be consistent in making sure that both conditional notification and conditional control attributes are uh, covered. So then uh, conditional notification attributes define the conditions that trigger a notification that's existing, but conditional control attributes define the cadence of measurement of the conditions that trigger a notification. And I'll just keep going in, unless I hear somebody interrupt me. Um, so the, the set of notification attributes uh, defined here, this is the pre-existing text. It allows the client, client to control how often a client is interested in receiving notifications and how much a resource value could change uh, when um, to make it interesting. I added the text, the set of control attributes defined here allow a client to control how often the server performs a measurement of the conditions. And so that's explicitly the EP max and EP min and EP max, which controls that cadence. I added them into the table. Uh, and so this is, this is just a list of the attributes and I changed the name to control notification and control 
conditional notification and control attributes for consistency. Um, so, and I'm trying to distinguish between existing text and new text. I know you guys can look at this and, and know that for yourself, but just to review, control notifications should be evaluated, um, but control con conditional control attributes are used to configure the internals. And I, I use the same language from here. I like the way I did this. Sorry, patting myself on the back. So conditional notification attributes should be evaluated on all potential notifications from a resource. And whether that's the internal server-driven sampling process, or if it's an external update request from the server. But here's what's interesting. The con conditional control attributes are used to configure that internal server-driven sampling process. So that's why I call them control attributes, because that's all they're doing. And that's, of course, for performing the measurement. Um, Bill, did, did you want me to go over the PMIN stuff while I'm here? Um, not necessarily. Um, I was just uh, wondering whether PMAX fits into the conditional control attributes or not. And in that case, ah. if PMAX is one of those, then we might have to change the wording for it. Would you, I'm not sure whether you scrolled up or down, but it was near the table, I think. Um, and uh, yeah, so this uh, uh, just just uh, sorry, Alan, if you go more down, yeah, so so there is the, the, the last line there that says conditional control attributes are used to configure the internal server driven sampling. Um, I'm wondering whether that language is accurate if we if we if we bring Pmax as a conditional control attribute also. So, uh, I see what I see what you're saying now because, yeah, it doesn't tell you about the the note and and pmin as well actually pmin is really a control attribute mm -hmm. because the, all that's doing is is you know restricting or mandating when you send a report not doing the evaluation yeah, report yeah so so it's it's mostly about reporting and, um, and, and uh, configuring so yeah yeah i i like that if if we could is yeah I, I agree with that i hadn't thought about it. So let me keep going through the new text and then we can we can maybe try and come up with a way I could modify the, the draft to reflect all that. I'm not sure there's really much change there because um, you know it, it I didn't have to well we'll go through the full thing in a, in a few minutes. Let me do this. All right, so now the minimum evaluation period, and I tried to craft this very much like the format that we did PM in. So, you know, when present indicates minimum time in seconds, the server must wait between two consecutive measurements of the condition of a resource. When it expires, the server may immediately perform a new measurement. It does, it's, it's saying you must wait this time, but you don't have to do it at the end of this time. And then um, I tried to capture this in the absence of parameter and, is, and that's not used by the server. That's where we would, I guess, inject a you know if if EP min is not defined, P min can be used. Um, P min may be used uh, as the the default wait period. I want to reflect that, and then just saying it's got to be greater than zero or it's a bad request. And then similarly, the uh, in P max EP max, excuse me, I. It's the, the server time in seconds may wait between two consecutive measurements, right? Uh, because, you know, it, it, and I struggled when I originally wrote this, I kind of struggled with the wording because you must wait for EP min. You could do a measurement, but you must do a measurement after EP max. So you, the server may wait between two consecutive measurements. You can wait up to this value. When the maximum period expires, you must perform a measurement. And then in the absence of this parameter, it's not defined used by the server, and then it must be greater than zero, it's a bad request. Then this was the conditional between the two. If they're both defined, EP max must be greater than EP min, otherwise you send a bad request. Uh, you return a bad request. And then there was just a spelling error I found there. That was it. So those are my proposed changes. 
I didn't include the example text. I think example text may be valuable, but I didn't know if we wanted to include it just for the use of EP min AP max, or we wanted to include other example text. So I didn't include any example text, but I did want to write that to show uh, and put it in the issue so we can cut and paste it uh, over here if we want. All right. So that's my pull request. Where, where do we want to go from here? So um, from my perspective, I think most most of this text is is uh, is okay. I, I still have to uh, go through this a little bit more carefully, but but this this looks sensible to me. I think that um, where was it that I saw? I saw something that that. Um, yeah, there was there was something that you mentioned regarding e, the if EP main is not set, then uh, then uh, the server. What, what was the language there? I need to check once more. But but I think that there's that there should be something written in the implementation considerations about about what to do in the absence of this parameter. Indeed, so um, if if P main is set and EP main is not set, then uh, the, we could actually reflect some text in the implementation considerations that that. That the uh, the server can use pmin if necessary. So, do do you want? I mean, I can edit the pull requests. Do you want me to do that now? Yeah, that that would be good at least okay. if you if you can do that. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Item number one hundred and sixty. So that is. Here, uh, in the absence of this parameter, the minimum value of this and this not used by the server, the server may use pmin if defined uh, as a guidance of the. And I'm just I'm just free forming mm -hmm. text here. Desired um, measurement cadence, something like that. Yeah, just just put it that way. That and um, just could you just scroll down to see if there is anything in the implementations consideration section? Because um, if we move down. Um, there, uh, implementation yeah, considerations. In the, yes. Um, so in the second, in the second paragraph, when we talked about the, uh, oh, hang on. Uh, yeah. So, so there was, there was a discussion there about the, the internal sample period for determining the resource value. So that, that needs to be, um, considered as well. So, um, but that, that, that refers to also the notification ban, um, Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what needs to change here. Um, server internal sample period. Yeah, that's that's probably the the internal sample period is probably not very accurate considering now if we're introducing EP min and EP max there. So, so I would say that uh, we should probably rephrase that instead of saying internal sample period that we could actually mention internal sample period and. Uh, and uh, uh, the EP mean EP max values, so something like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's see, or How's this? Okay. This is okay, I think. Theoretically, this could occur in line with the server internal sample period or the configuration of EP min and EPX max for determining resource value. Does that read well to you guys? Um, yes, it reads well. That's okay. Um, we just have to ensure that that band, yeah, yeah, band band is actually a modifier for for 
the behavior of greater than and less than. So that's uh, as long as that doesn't clash too much with the EPV and EPMAX values here. Yeah, I think this is good. It doesn't. It's actually quite yeah. independent because. Yeah, it's quite independent because it's interesting yeah. that the PMIN, EPMIN, PMAX, and EPMAX have nothing to do with the notification itself. <laughs> it's just when the device does the, does the measurement, does the test. And that's true of, of greater than, uh, less than, step, band. Right. Um, so that, that was my proposal for EPMIN and EPMAX. When, when I look back at these other ones, Somebody put something in chat. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, sorry, Kristen. Let me get back to you. Let me just do this real quick. I, I did. I was considering putting in pull request for edge confirmable and maximum historical Q because I really like the alignment between Dynelink and lightweight M to M. But I didn't want to do that all at one shot. So I figure if we can get an agreement on EP min, EP max, and we're comfortable with that then I would put in a separate pull request for each of these other ones. Uh, that way we could do them on an individual basis. Is that, mm. is that good for you guys? That's, that's reasonable. Yes. All right. So Christian, I, I'm sorry, let me go back. I, I'm assuming you want me to go back to the pull requests. Christian. I saw something in the chat window. Christian, are you there? Hi, Christian. Are you having audio trouble? We can't hear you. Oh. Uh, so sorry. Um, hello. Now we hear you. Okay. Sorry. Um. So first of all, I'm I'm rather happy with those um, attributes that are um, more related to the sampling and not to the resource um, to the propagation of the resource state um, being separate. Um, one particular change that caught my eye is the line about how those are transferred in a query parameter. So as I understand, um, in lightweight M to M, they are always transported via a completely different channel anyway. And in the diff line 91, it says that both notification and control attributes can be in query parameters. And this would be the very point where we could, where I think it would make sense to say this applies to all and this applies only to the notification parameters because the control attributes, um, when they are put in the observe request, they wind up in a as part of a safe request. So they shouldn't really change anything inside the server and the sampling interval that the server does, which would probably apply to all the observations there or all to the whole sensor. Those should not be changeable by a safe request, and especially in, um, in which, the, which the observe request is. So would it make sense for you to limit this to the notification attributes? And then control attributes can be used wherever there is an, an actual unsafe oper uh, an operation that ha that may have side effects uh, involved. Okay, so I originally tried to separate them here and I couldn't figure out the right way to do it. And because I couldn't figure out what to say about control attributes here. It, because in, in, in reality, in an observe request, you can include any control or notification attributes. They can be there. Um, um, but, yeah. The thing is, um, as long as those attributes are set, for example, um, at a binding, in a, inside a binding table or inside the, the lightweight M2M -M properties of that object, that's an operation that, can, that, that affects the whole device and it's okay because that's visible to the user and visible to the protocol. Um, as long as they are only applied to notification, and please correct me when I'm wrong, but I, but I think that the way you're using the environment lightweight M2M um, doesn't even use those those query parameters in in a, in an observation. When they are used there, they would affect all the other observations that could be on the same resource. 
um, in a GET request. But, but they wouldn't. So, okay. So the, the, where these values are applied and when, because the only place that these, these attributes are included in an observe is the query parameters. They're not anywhere else, right? And so if you have an existing observation on an attribute, and you set in a new observation on that attribute. Is that a separate observation or the same observation? That is a separate observation. Correct. And so those parameters, uh, th they're only applied to that observation, right? So whether it's a control attribute or a notification attribute, it only applies to the observation in which they're attached. But at least one of the um, attributes does not make sense in that way. I mean, but this uh, history attribute, that's something that affects the whole resource because it's, it's, for, I mean, it's, it's not in there yet, but it's in, in the other table that's supposed to migrate over here. Um, if if that, that, that history attribute affects how a later observation would see the initial state, wouldn't it? Um. You're talking control attributes? Yeah. So let's let's say I have two attributes. You know, I have an observation on my temperature sensor and I have P min equals five, P max equals 10. Forget EP min and EP max, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I have another observation that I set on that same resource and I set another observation that says P min is 10, P max is 20. Did those control attributes affect either of the other observations? Um, sort of P min, I thought P min and P max. Okay, they are they are, Um, no, they don't. Uh, no, they don't. I was thinking more of the control attributes that were there before we just before talked about P min and P max going over to control attributes. So, um, so you're just talking about E P min and E P max. E P min, E P max, and um, and his and history. Um. Okay, I, I've actually been doing something in, in, in the meantime as well. Sorry about that. Um, so I'm trying to separate out here the, the conditional notification and conditional control. In my mind, they're, they're completely separate in terms of the scope is solely within the, the specific observation we're talking about. And maybe, I'm talk, maybe we're talking past each other. I don't really understand your, your question. The, whether they're control or notification, I set up an observation and that's an atomic thing. And the device, what the device must do is the device must take all the notifications and all the EP min and EP max values of all notifications to decide its wake up cadence. Because it has, the device has to wake up to at least perform one measurement, but that doesn't affect the other cadences of the other measurements. It still has to abide by the EP min and EP max of its individual observation. So a more complex example is I have a, um, a another temperature sensor and I want to wake up every one second. So I don't set EP, EP min, I set EP max at every one second. So the P min and P maxes are the same at five and 60. On the time equals zero, I generate notifications for both. Time equal five is my P min uh, expiry, so I know I can't generate a, re a report. But now I'm going to wake up every second to evaluate the second temperature sensor. But that doesn't change what's happening on the first temperature sensor. Even though I'm waking up for, for temperature two, measuring it every second, I can't measure temperature one for five seconds. So when five seconds expires on temperature one, I'm already waking up for temperature two on my one second cadence. So I'm gonna measure both. Um, okay, so if if two observers are observing the same temperature, would the, would the device then, I mean, what will, if this is actually about when this, when the sensor is being evaluated, um, what if they conflict there? If I if one request says that you may um sets an e for two requests two observations both on the same attribute, one says ep min uh, ep between one and two and the other says ep between ten and twenty. 
um, would that device now measure every one to two seconds and only take every tenth or so value into consideration for the other one? Or would it measure more regularly and um, report anyway because someone else asked the device to, re to measure more, more often? It can't violate the parameters. So temp one, it cannot, or well, I shouldn't say that, observation one. Okay. That is, it cannot violate what's in observation one, regardless of what's in observation two. Just because the um, observation, and we're talking about the cadence of the measurement, not the, the reporting criteria, correct? So yeah. as long as you're not violating the measurement parameters of the observation, you're solely basing it on the reporting criteria. So observation one says, I can't measure, I can't measure more frequently than every five seconds. Well, if measurement two says you can measure every second, or I'm sorry, observation two says you can measure every second, I would say it's implementation, whether you want to evaluate the notification, the reporting criteria of the same as an observation on the same resource. There's nothing here that says you can't. I, do we want to specify that? I mean, you found a good use case, which is same resource. I have a single temperature sensor. One client, and we're in a multi-client environment, one client says measure it every one second. The other client says measure it every 10 seconds. So can I report on observation one at the same time I report on observation two? Because I was awake doing the measurement anyway. We don't we don't have specified behavior for that. At this point, I would say that's implementation dependent. Did, did that make sense, Christian? I, I, I agree with your use case. It 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 does make sense. I'm 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 basically still trying to so, so where I'm where I'm coming from is more the, the topic of how does this work through intermediaries that may understand the protocol. Um I do see your point that all these evaluation um, periods can be um, treated independently and not um, are not interpreted as this is when you must take a measurement, but this is when you must take a measurement for consideration uh, for consideration here. Um, so I may take some time to to process all the the implications of all of this. Um, if if everything here is safe, then probably yeah, then then this might this may all work. Yeah. Well, I, I think it's safe, but do we want to provide guidance? I, I think that the because to me, you know, I I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna do what makes sense in my device as an implementer. If I'm waking up every second because of some other observation, I'm already awake. I'm gonna check this the other one anyway. Do we want to provide guidance to say that, you know, uh, the, this is, these values are recommendations from the, the client to enable the server uh, to maximize its, its power savings or maximize its wake up cadence. I don't know how we want to cover that, but I, I, I think it's important to give guidance where, where we can. I don't know. I struggle with that one. Right. I, I did just to, to show, tell you guys what I was doing. Because, I, Bill, I think you said that, that minimum period and PMIN and PMAX are actually control attributes. So I thought maybe did we want to separate out? And so I left, uh, Christian, I left this statement alone. And then I said, okay, here's the control table of notification attributes. And then I had that same statement in the, for the um, control attributes. And here's the table for the control attributes. And I put PMIN, PMAX, EPMIN, EPMAX. Is, is that, does that work for you guys? I, I mean, to separate into two separate tables? So for, for, for me, it's, it's, it's not really changing anything. It's more like, yeah, it's, it's it, just, it, yeah, it, it's just, you know, I don't know, a recognition that there are differences. 
I think Austin had something to say in the chat channel as well. Oh, oh sorry, I missed. Yeah, so I, I was trying to think of uh, having two clients and one sets uh, EP min and EP max both to seven seconds and the other one sends it to 13 seconds. Um, so do I really have to ignore the evaluations I do for client two? Uh, because they, they happen at the wrong time for the evaluations I'm supposed to make for client one, or I mean, how, how powerful are these minimum and maximum values? It's a, it's a good question because, um, if the device is doing its own wake up cadence because of you know, like you said, you have the, the client one saying wake up every seven seconds, the client two is saying wake up every 13 seconds. Is client one in, in is the is the server invalidated from providing a notification at seven seconds to client two? And I, I, I don't think so. I think it's it's the device because the device has the the true state of things, call it the true state, that I woke up and I know there's something, I think the client should be able to evaluate the notification uh, conditions, right? Or the notification attributes to say, I'm up anyway. So why shouldn't I be able to generate a, a report, generate a notification? That's, I guess that's the guidance I'm thinking maybe we should capture. That, you know, if, be if independently of these EP min and EP max attributes, the device detects a or is a, is able to do a measurement because of its internal processing, that the device should um, evaluate the notification criteria and decide whether it should do a, a notification. So yeah, Karsten, I agree with you. Why why would you waste the opportunity if you're already awake? Yeah, I'm just wondering about the, the language we need to allow that. Agreed. So maybe implementation criteria. Should we should we put that in implementation criteria? Let's just capture Maybe. that. From um, con considering Karsten's example, do we really need to phrase this as a minimum and as a maximum? Because if we if we phrase this more in terms of um, maximum, if if we phrase this one sided. Um, then, then the problem with the concrete example will go away. And really, what does it mean to have a minimum period between samples? I mean, the div this is assuming that the device is actively polling, but it could just as well receive the um, receive the values from from some external interrupt or from another observation, for all that matters. Right, and and that's exactly correct. So the 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 way that this originated for me is I know I have, I have deep sleep and I have PSM, right? Power saving mode. And I, I didn't, I didn't know what timer I should set to wake out of this mode. So I had no guidance on, on a timer to wake out of this mode. All I knew is I had to wake up at PMAX. So no matter what, I could always just set my deep sleep timer to be 60 seconds. I'd wake up, boom, send out my report. That doesn't, that's not a good implementation, right? So I wanted some guidance of when I should wake up. But if I have five observations all on different cadences with different EP mins and EP maxes and at different P mins and P maxes, I have to create a scheduler, and which is what I did. I created a scheduler taking all of these timers into effect and, and all of these cadences into effect and my own internal cadences. I know I need to wake up every you know, uh, 30, you know, more like 100 milliseconds to, to beep a light, right? Whatever my internal cadence is, I had to create a scheduler. And then based upon the cadence within the scheduler for all of these accommodations, that's how I set my timer. And that's really what the device is doing. Because it's not a single observation or set of EP min or EP max or P in or P min or P max for a single observation that guides the device. It's all of them. Do we want to capture that? And just say that whenever the device wakes up, 
um, it can perform the observation based upon the notification attributes. How, how does epmin play into your scheduler? Whenever epmin is on, I use epmin as a one of the elements of an optional wake up. So when I'm doing my scheduler, I show all the, the mandatory wakeups in, you know, so I create a list of the mandatory wakeups and I put in the optional wakeups and I look at what's my first mandatory. So that's my maximum wait time. What are the ones before that? And do I want to wake up at that time? Have I waited long enough to get power savings? And if I have, and it makes sense to my device because of other things I might want to do, then I wake up on the optional and set my timer based upon the optional. If none of that works, I wake, I set my timer to wake up on the, the first mandatory. And I do that every time I go to sleep, you know, because I'm basically, it's a dynamic, how much time should I go to sleep now? And remember, there's no alignment of observations because it's only based upon a T0 of that observation. So it's, it's not, T0 of observation one is not T0 of observation two, or my internal T0 of my internal event. So it's, it's quite complex. Let me phrase it differently. If all EP min were always zero, would this significantly worsen the implementation? It doesn't worsen my implementation. It worsens my ability. It worsens the ability of a client to receive a notification. So a client says, I have this temperature sensor. Basically, I, I want the report, it, you know, it, 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 at least every, I want the possibility of a report at least every five seconds. If I don't do that, there's no way for the client to do that. There's no way for the client to represent that. The only thing the client can represent right now is don't tell me before five seconds. You must tell me at least every 60 seconds. The client has no control other than that. I'm, I'm, I'm not doubting the, the, the usefulness of EP Max, just of EP Min. So if, if it says if the client wants to have the possibility of a notification every five seconds, it can set EP Max as five. But Correct. what does it get from setting the EP Min? Um, it's, it's giving, yeah, the, I guess the utility there is not really for the client as much as the server. It's giving the server some slop in order to, you know, provide a better scheduler. You know, it's really, it's not for the client as much as the server. Cause the, it gives that if EP min is five and EP max is 10. It's telling the server, hey, you know, just this is this is your area. You can you can do a little uh, scheduling freedom. You have five seconds to play around. Yeah, I mean, that's more for for me as a as a server than it is for the client. I'm, I'm trying to answer all the questions. I don't have all the answers. I'm just, I'm wondering what, I, I, Kirsten, I'm here, I'm in edit mode at the implementation considerations. Should we capture something here? I mean, I can try and create some text on the fly. Shall we do that? Well, the implementation considerations have to be inside the, the set of things permitted by the semantics. So I think the, the first thing we have to do is uh, define those semantics in, in such a way that the implementation approaches we, we would like to enable are actually possible. Okay, I, I understood all the words. I don't understand what that means in terms of trying to type the text. Should I be describing the example and then say that the, uh, you know, or should I just say, I, I interdependency of uh, control attributes of a notific of an observation are uh, implementation specific or are 
you know, enable the, I'm just trying to figure out, do, do we say that the, the, I don't know, I'm struggling, I'm, I'm flattering. Do you want to describe the implementation that, that you think would be good? And then make sure that the semantics we actually define uh, further up in the document uh, actually allow that. Sure, if this even makes sense. Okay, when a server has multiple observations with different measurement cadences and is defined by the EP min and EP max values, the server may evaluate all observations when performing the measurement of any one observation. That's a good goal, and, and to get there, we would need to define the, the EP min in such a way that, that we actually do have that leeway. Okay, so then when we go look back to EP min, EP min, um, that makes sense because we have may here. Oh, that's Matt, EP max, sorry, sorry. Um, Server must wait. Yeah, that, that's oh, it's not just must. True. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, and worse yet, it can't do. It can't satisfy this must currently at all. Correct. With current yeah. observations. Right, and I, I don't want to make it. It's easy to go should. <laughs> that makes it easy. <laughs> right? It's recommended, but you know you don't have to. I actually that might that that does let us that is the semantics that allow us to meet my implementation consideration because I can violate this when I decide to. Yeah, when, when, then, then you could just as well put must, but you know you won't in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, must if you want to. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I think really what. Uh, uh, we are trying to say here is that uh, from the the point of view of the client, this would be a good thing for the server to do. Yes, but it, it's it's the from the view of 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 each client. I'm giving you these recommendations, but it's up to you how they impact your measurement cadence. They, so they really are just recommendations from the client. So should does make sense in that context. Well, should is always an interoperability requirement that we have specific exceptions for in mind. And we would have to spell out the, those exceptions in, in order to be able to use should. So I'd, I'd rather put in something like is encouraged to wait or something like that if, if we think this is a relatively weak request. Okay, so the minute and second the client recommends that the server wait between two consecutive measurements. Yes. I like that. Okay, we should have some correlation to EP max as well, since there is also uh, yeah, a must condition there. So yeah, but this is a, a this is a, a firm requirement. 
it doesn't matter what else you're doing. You have to do a measurement at the end of VP max. That, that's not a recommendation. That is a requirement. Yeah, I think it's easy for the server to combine the EP maxes because it just uh, does a minimum of them. Uh, mm -hmm. But it, it becomes difficult if we have the EP mints because then you get these weird uh, schedules, uh, like in my example here. Mm -hmm. I actually like the way this reads up here now because that's that's really the way I utilize it. It's, I understand that the server says, you know, you can, you know, I, you should wait for this amount of time, or I'm fine if you wait this amount of time. So I kind of like the way that reads. Um, I'm, I'm still having a bit trouble coming up with or imagining how this would be used from a client point of view. So um, if I were to implement a client and I don't know how the server is implemented, which I generally don't. Um, then I have nothing to put in there. I could put in a zero or I could, I mean, so um, from from the power rec from the, the power considerations, I understand you would be using this for, this is more of a topic of, um, does it make sense uh, to evaluate this given that my EP max will expire sooner or later? Um, so isn't this really a thing that the server can decide on its own? Okay, so not it is, but the server doesn't know the preferences of the client. So that's the way it is right now. The server makes this decision independently. So let's take the case of, and believe me, clients are aware of the servers. I know my server is actually a power line device in uh, Alaska doing a measurement of a pipeline. I know that because it's my device. When I'm the client, that server is my device. It's not like I'm unaware of the purpose of it, who deployed it, you know, how much it costs, the power saving I need out of it. I know all that because it's mine. The client is only the one that's saying, you know, I want to be able to configure some things. So in this case, I have that device out on the, the, the oil field, right? And I know it's power line. Uh, so I know I can't wake up more frequently than every five sec five minutes to do a measurement. I don't need an EP min. I just use EP max to say, wake up every five minutes to do a measurement. Yeah. But if I know that I have a little bit more flexibility because I've got a huge battery attached to it, I can say, you know what? You must wake up every five minutes, but I'm fine if you wake up every minute. That's up to you because it's my device. I know the characteristics of my device. You know, I'm, I'm using my no. use cases. I'm not sure that's true in all use cases. This, this sounds more to me like something that should, that is a, there's a configuration, that's a configuration thing than, a, than something that's related to this observation. Um, you know, I don't know, because an observation, it's very observation centric, how frequently you should be doing a measurement. Because if this is an alarm observation, I want it to be as frequently as needed for yeah, me to. Index in there. Right, but if it's not, if it's a, if it's just a notification, you know, of a, a current level, right? Then so a liquid level. I want to say, you know what? You must send it to me once every minute, or you must measure it once every minute. But you know, if you want to measure it more frequently, maybe every other ten seconds, it's up to you. So my recommendation is don't do it more frequently than 10 seconds. You must do it every minute. But that's your scheduler. Do what you want. Yeah, I think it's more like like advice from, from the client that it really doesn't need this information to be evaluated more often. So I think we maybe should phrase it that way. How, how did, I'm sorry, Karsten. You we're talking about this? Yes. Okay, so how did you want to rephrase it? You have it also in the chat. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, so I have to close my the, chat because it will. The <laughs> client indicates that it has no use for this being evaluated more often. 
See the minimum period indicates maximum time seconds. The client, when present, the minimum evaluation period indicates a min the minimum time in seconds. The, I'm going to try and put this at the end. Uh, the client, the lens to the server. For more frequent measurement periods, since it has you, since it has no interest in receiving more frequent. But it's not about receiving. It, it, uh, it has no interest in the server making more. Yeah. <clears throat> Sorry. Let's see if the sentence makes sense now. No, there's some, some remnants there. Okay, so when present, the minimum value indicates minimum time in seconds. The client recommends to the server to wait. To wait between two consecutive measurements of the, since it has no interest in doing more frequent measurements. Yeah. It's never doing more frequent measurements. Yeah. The client has no interest. The client has no interest in, in the server doing more frequent measurements. Yes. yes. That works for me. <laughs> I love wordsmithing, you know, online. Sometimes it gets, it gets tough. All right. Reading it again. When present, the minimum evaluation period indicates minimum time in seconds. The client recommends to the server to wait between two consecutive measurements of the conditions of a resource since the client has no interest in the server doing more frequent measurements. It's it's a bit long, but it does count. Yeah, I think I think we could we could we could <laughs> yes, exactly. We could work with that now and then and then get it a little. All right, more uh, let me let me concise a bit later. I don't want to lose anything, so let me go in ahead and commit these changes. Did did you uh, did everybody agree on um, the separation of the two tables? Because I did that as just a you know a proposal. Yeah, I, did that. I, did I, do? I, I think it's good. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm actually uh, weighing up whether we should have two separate sections to describe them, but but let's have them as two tables for now. Okay, so let me just uh, keep those as two tables. Let me go ahead and commit this. I just don't want to lose these changes. <laughs> I, I know we're coming up to the end of the meeting. Did we want to keep going or did you guys have other topics? So, uh... Uh, just just to add on to to that section when you were editing the uh, EPIM and EPMAX, uh, I'm coming back to the example that Carsten just posted uh, on the chat channel about um, here. Uh, so uh, it was. Uh, can you scroll a little bit more? Just a little bit more. Um, Yes, if both EP min and EP max attributes are defined, EP max must be greater than EP min. So is that a greater than or a greater than greater or equals to EP min? Uh, I always, if it's greater than or equal to, I saw no reason why you would ever send EP min. So I was always thinking it would have to be greater than. And okay. It's an edge condition, but to me, if I set EP min and EP max to seven seconds, it makes mm -hmm. no sense. I would just not define EP min. But it's it's how do we do that with P min and P max? Because I copied I I, I tried Yeah, I think I think P min and P max have exactly the same condition that, that P max is always greater than P min. Let's, let's go look. I'm just trying to get to the Okay, minimum period, maximum period. It doesn't say anything in P min and P max. Sorry, I think I was right talking periods. about uh, GT and LT. Sorry, so yeah. Ah, GT and LT are special. Yeah, they were, they were different. Yeah, exactly. So P, <laughs> yeah. P min, P max. I think we didn't actually say anything there. 
Yeah, here it goes. It, oh no, actually, right here. It says. Sorry, it yes, we do. Months. We do say oh, that. So, yeah. yeah. I, get, I should have kept that same verbiage, I, 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 so I separated it out into a separate sentence. I, I could combine it if you want. The maximum must be greater than zero and greater than P minute, EP minute present. You want me to do that for consistency? Let's do that for consistency. That would be good. At least if you put that as one section inside. I, I like consistency. I try to yeah. be very good about that. Yeah, so that's that's easier when you read the language. Back into edit mode. We're we're pretty close. I'm thank thanks everybody. I mean, this is this was a, a difficult topic to capture correctly. Okay, here we go. Otherwise, there, then I can get rid of this. All right, I like it. I'm, I'm assuming yeah, that works. Excellent, thank you. Thanks for the confirmation. Yeah, yeah. All right. All right. Um, good stuff. I think we're good. The, the question, I guess, is did we want to? Put this in different sections, uh, because I can just do that offline if we want to, or keep it in the same section. Well, please keep it in the same section because I still have editorial changes coming in, so uh, it's, it's better not to. Yeah, just just keep it serious. I think this is good. Sounds good. I'm just doing a quick review to make sure no fat fingers or other bad stuff happens. I think this works for me. So. The, um... it, hold on. So as as a, if if my understanding of of EP min and EP max is correct, um, this should so so the, the or let me phrase it differently. The, the mental exercise I would like to do or invite you to do as well is um, if if two observations uh, on a, on on one resource are coming in through a proxy that is aware of this implementing those um, conditional control attributes, um. Can the proxy come up with a set of parameters based on which it would start just a single observation and then forward the values? It appears to me that it would work, but I'd like to go through it probably offline and maybe someone someone else could do. Yeah, I think it would be good implementation considerations to talk about how a server might combine values from different uh, observations. Um, so we have this statement that kind of addresses that. I think the, the interesting case that Christian mentioned is really an intermediary is could do that as well and then provide a you know a, a combined observation or or you know optimized set of control attributes well inter intermediate usually has no knowledge about the the semantics that the server actually applies here it, it, so, might, it might have cached its self-description oh well <laughs> yes the legality of that is questionable but the intermediate intermediary can just as well be a reverse proxy set up explicitly that has that is configured with that knowledge. Yeah, that's true. So, uh, Karsten, is did we want to enhance this text, or do you think this gives us enough, I guess, allowance for the server to say, you know, if I'm waking up for any reason, I could do whatever I want. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this this gives leeway. This doesn't give guidance. Um, so, uh, but I, I agree with Christian. Uh, this requires some more thinking. We are not going to do this in 
My mistake. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. All right. So the, the, the PR is there. I mean, I, I think anybody can, you know, make uh, basically a pull request into my pull request. So you, you, I don't think you have rights on my branch, but if you wanted to make suggested changes into my pull request, we could absolutely do that. And then we could review them in, in the next interim meeting. I also made a pull request fixing your tables so they look good on GitHub. <laughs> All right. So there is, ah. So going back to make tables readable and get a flavor markdown. So I should merge this. So you don't need to do this uh, for, for the internet draft, but if you are really working a lot on GitHub, it helps to make the tables readable in GitHub flavored markdown as well. So, Bill, I think you would need to merge this into. Yeah, I think uh, I just saw that also. So, yeah, let let me try and merge those. But it's um, going in the. Uh, it's 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 good, Carsten. I think I think that's a, that's a good 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 approach to take anyway because it's it's a, it's a pain lo looking at this from from GitHub and uh, yeah. It's, uh, that would that would actually work very nicely. Thank you. All right, and then when when you adopt that change into the master, I'll go ahead and update. Actually, I'll just yeah. All right, uh, we'll figure it out when we look at the merge conflicts. Okay, thanks, guys. I'm I'm I think thank I'm you. Honest. I I can stop. Thank you. Thank you, Ellen. Uh, thank you, everybody, for your input. Appreciate it. Alan, thanks indeed, and all for the discussion. Um, you were saying you're also planning to file more PRs on three additional parameters. I'm not sure. Do, do you guys, I mean, when you look at those parameters, do they make, maybe I'll put in a separate issue for each one of them so we could start a, a thread. Because I don't, to me, I would like to. I don't know if you guys would agree with that. So I'll start. I will take three those three other attributes and I'll put each one in a separate issue so we can find I think that would be useful because there are three three different kinds of attributes anyway. So exactly. Uh, it's 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 good to separate them as separate issues indeed. Thank you. Okay. I'll put those issues in. I'll try and get them in right now. Thanks. And just a quick thing for the authors. Uh, there's still um, an outstanding open issue on GitHub number 17 on proxy and caching considerations. That was the result of long discussion on site meetings with noting that Pmax, I, I guess, was problematic with proxies. And the best thing to do, at least as a next step, was to add some considerations somewhere. So I suppose that's also on track for the next update, Bill. Yeah, yeah. Let me have a, a look at that. I, I think that we actually resolved it, but I'm not entirely certain yet. But there, there was a discussion with Pmax, right? Yeah, yeah, I think it was about that one. Yeah, because we have four open issues, and uh... Uh, speaking of which, the oldest yeah. one opened by Karsten is closed, I think, because it was about authorship, and I remember mm -hmm. you changing the author list in the version submitted in July. Yes. So that issue is probably closed. Yeah, we could we could close that. Close that closed, yeah. yeah. Do we also yes. should okay. I close my should I close my issue since we now have a pull request? And, and well, I'll, I'll leave it open. We can talk about it next time. Yeah, also, let's let's leave this open. I'll I'll, I'll, I'll be just do the pull request. That comes in. And please motion. consider whether we should include my example into the draft. I don't know if we want to do that, but it, it has helped our conversation, so it may help the reader. Uh, personal okay. opinion: it would help a lot, and at some point, even with ASCII art figures. Yeah, let's let's skip this uh, example and then uh, we try to generate uh, let's say something that's more consistent with how we are doing this in the in the in the draft also. Sounds good. Yep. So by the way, we have three more interims to go, and if need be, we can come back to this topic if there is more to discuss based on the update that come during the next weeks. Otherwise, one hundred nine, of course. <laughs> Okay, uh, we are plus four, plus five now. Uh, anything else you want to quickly mention for today? Yeah. Uh, no, but thanks, thanks for inviting. Uh, 
Of course. Marco. <laughs> of course. Okay. And, and if we can come back to this. I think the people who I would have told this to have already left, but just pointing out the, the CoreConf uh, Shepherd stuff is moving forward. Um, uh, I noted, thank you very much, Karsten. You should have got also all the APR call answers now. <laughs> yeah, so I put okay. them. Mm. Great, thank you. Okay, then I think we can adjourn the meeting. Uh, thank you all for today. Have a good day. Okay, thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.